Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Danny, physician, astrologer. How's everyone doing today? I have a very special video for you guys today. I am going to give you a sneak peek of a course that I have been creating that will take you from a novice astrologer to a adequate astrologer. Okay, you'll be able to... Um, basically understand all the archetypes, the houses, the signs, the planets, the aspects. You're going to learn about dynamic energy. I'm going to talk to you about progressions and transits and planetary returns, the clockwise house system, and also some ethics and how to be an astrologer. So all of this I'm creating right now. And so I thought I'd give you a quick sneak peek on a part of my uh, progressions module. I'm going to show you my slides the information that got me going. And I couldn't think of a better way to explain progressions than to share with you my own progressions and my story and uh, how synchronous it actually is. And then I just wanna show you guys a couple of things. So hopefully this will be a quick video. This is my didactic series. You're going to learn something in this. I'm not gonna show you any astrology in the sky right now, but I am going to teach you how you can work with progressions and if you want to, how you can work with me with progressions, okay? So let me just start sharing, get into it. I'm not even really sure where to start. So let me start with, um, let's put this down. We'll get there in a second. Let's look at the PowerPoint. So this is basically the slide deck that I'm using for my course. As you can see, it's really, really long. I, I've been kind of a crazy person, literally like doing this, all of this in my spare time. I've worked so hard that I've given myself carpal tunnel and I'm going, <laughs> I'm just taking a little break right now and doing some videos so that I can uh, rest my, my wrist. But this is, this is the work that I've been doing. And a lot of this I took from this book, Predictive Astrology by Bernadette Brady. Um, it's probably one of the best te textbooks you're going to get on how to use progression. She uses a lot of tropical examples. And of course, she doesn't cover Ophiuchus. And so I'm going to share with you uh, some Ophiuchus energy uh, when we get into my personal example. Okay, I didn't want to leave that out. So what the hell is a progress chart? What are you even talking about? Um, so when we look at the sky and we do the transits, whenever I talk to you guys about what's happening in the sky, this, this energy is essentially so alien to us. Um, to our natal resonance, to our natal chart, that when when we get encountered by it, we project it to the outside world so that it can be safely assessed by the, the conscious mind. Um, these are the universal energies. This is like the Venus transits or a full moon read. It, it, sometimes it's called mundane astrology. But progressed is not alien. Progressed has been recorded into your subconscious since the first uh, 90 plus or minus days of your life. Um, and it basically represents your entire life, which is why I say plus or minus 90. Some of us live shorter lives and some of us live longer lives. And when events happen in a progressed chart, uh, transformation evolves and unfolds from the subconscious mind. So it's it's literally something that wells up in the base of you and then begins manifesting externally. Okay, and it's deeply, deeply personal, which is why the only good example I could give you was my chart. <laughs> so essentially the way a progress chart works is that one day equals one year. So in other words, one progressed moon cycle will take 29 years versus 29 days. And one sun cycle takes 365 years versus days. Now the moon is the only one that will repeat its cycle two to three times in the average person's lifespan. I am, I am on my second uh, lunar cycle and I started at the progressed new moon phase of it and I've walked myself up to now and I've looked a little bit in the future and it's, it's quite profound. And so I wanted to share some of this with y'all so you, you can understand how important progressed energy might actually be for us. So now when your progressed sun or any other progressed luminary, because you can not only look at the moon, you can look at the sun, you can look at Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and all the other guys out there don't really move that much in a progressed chart. Because if you think about someone who's 30 years old, how far is Saturn going to move in 30 days? Not much, but the moon will, the moon will take a whole lap around, right? Or it'll move through a sign. So, so, so anytime something changes houses, changes signs, changes uh, direction, 
on your progress chart, it's a big deal. And when you use sidereal astrology, the real sky guys, the const constellations, I mean, I, I really don't even know how I can express to you how incredibly accurate it is. It's, it's almost spooky. And I'm kind of afraid something's going to happen to this video because I'm talking about the sky and I'm talking about Ophiuchus and I'm talking about this, this map to your life. Okay, so let's get into what we learn a little bit here. So there are non-natal energies that come from a progress chart and then there are natal chart energies. So essentially what I just talked about, the progress planet changing signs, the progress planet changing directions, forming a new aspect with other planets, uh, creating, and, and like I said, this creates like an intense desire from within, like you're driven, like you're guided, like it's from God, it's from the universe. And then there's natal chart energy. So you can compare your progress chart. You can actually put them together in a sensory chart with your natal chart and see what aspects the progress chart is doing to your natal chart. This is a less intense desire to proceed and it's projected externally, just like, just like transits are. Now, there wasn't anything in this predictive astrology book about the actual transits affecting a progress chart. So I don't know that that's a thing, but progressed transiting back or aspecting back to your natal chart is a thing and it is deeply personal. So outer planets really only move a few degrees in one person's lifetime. They tend to form chart related interactions rather than the non-natal chart related energies. So in other words, if you've got a Neptune Pluto sextile in your chart, you're going to have a Neptune sextile progress chart. Your entire progress chart will have a Neptune Pluto sextile. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars are the most commonly read non-natal chart energies. Okay, so then, um, then I in this lecture I proceed on to the other planets, but we're going to stop here on the Moon. This is actually twenty nine. Um, I wasn't sure if it was the synodic or sidereal, but it's actually the um, the sidereal. So the Moon yields predictive information, but does not flavor it with lunar meaning. So the difference between a natal chart and a progress chart is that the Moon is literally highlighting the portion of your hero's journey. So I don't know if many of you know this, but when you lay the zodiac out, that is the hero's journey. It's laid out for us in the sky. Everyone knows about the hero's journey, at least everyone should know. So if you don't know about that, look that up, look it up in terms of the Zodiac. And a lot of times they're missing Ophiuchus, okay? And that's where my moon is right now. So I'm gonna share that with you in a little bit, but but Ophiuchus is missing. And so I sat with this for a little while, especially since I've been studying Ophiuchus for over a year now, I feel like I have a pretty good handle on what that energy feels like. So essentially what the moon does is it illuminates that sign house or planet that it's aspected to. Okay. And its phase is also important. So this um, leads me to my first um, jump off point off of this PowerPoint. I want to show you these images. So here's the phases of the moon. <clears throat> Excuse me. You have new moon, which is when your progress sun and your progress moon are conjunct together. Then you have, uh, then you have the moon moving from in its counterclockwise um, motion around the wheel, around the zodiac chart, through the crescent moon, the first quarter moon, the gibbous moon, full moon, disseminating moon, last quarter, and balsamic moon. Okay. I'm not going to get too much into these descriptions, but this book has descriptions for each of these phases. It's like a cycle of harvesting. So essentially in the new moon, you're planting a seed. In the crescent phase, roots are taking place. At the quarter moon, which is a square, is not felt as a square. You know, normally when we're going through uh, regular every month moon cycles, squares are challenges. Squares are a, a, a peak of, of energy that we sometimes get a little exhausted with. But this square essentially means action. It means time to take action because you're going to feel driven within. The gibbous moon is when you start expressing and the full moon is when you're ready for harvest. You don't start anything new during a full moon progressed moon. You should be thinking about what you've already done and how to leverage that because the disseminating moon is when you transfer that to your community. And then the um, the last quarter is retilling the field. And then the balsamic moon is uh, freshening up the soil for the next cycle. Okay. And you only get two to three of these in your lifetime. So you better make it good. 
here's kind of how it, you know, maybe some key words for that energy. <clears throat> so right here you have your new moon, which is emergence. And notice how it's, it's uh, put on a wheel here for you. So you got sun, moon, conjunct, new moon, emergence, crescent moon, assertion, first quarter, action, gibbous moon, expression, full moon, fulfillment, disseminating moon, synthesis, third quarter moon, reorientation, balsamic moon, release, okay? So that's what you're working with on a progressed moon cycle in your life. Now, when you were born, if you weren't born on a new moon, then your next new moon cycle starts whenever that progressed moon reaches that. So for me, my first new moon was when I was about 17, okay? It can be as late as 26 or 27 years old. So if, if you were born perhaps right after a progressed new moon or a new moon in your natal chart, then you're going to wait a while before you get a new cycle to start over. So my first cycle was like from age, I don't know, from, let's see, it ended in 2017. And so 29 years before that, I guess it would have been 88. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, 88, man, I was in eighth grade. I, I, you know, I was playing video games and hanging out with my friends, playing kickball outside. That was my life. So that was, that was my first progress new moon. And then I had another one back in 2017 and boy, oh boy, did things start picking up after that. And I'll show you where I am now. It's pretty incredible. So I guess the next thing I want to do is show you the charts, show you how they move in a progressed fashion, because I think that's really helpful. I kind of told you a lot of stuff, but let's actually watch it move. <clears throat> and so what I did is I put my progression into the last new moon phase, which was approximately, actually it was precisely uh, June 26th of 2017. And that was the year that we had Hurricane Harvey come. That was the year our town got its first snow in 20 years. Um, that's when I began to become a little bit restless. You know, I knew that I was needed to do something in the public arena, but it wasn't really quite sure. And I distracted myself a lot. Uh, but anyway, very impactful year. So that was where my first new moon is. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of, take you through a little bit of how it moves. Now you can't go by days on a progress chart. It barely moves, you see that? The only thing that's really moving a little bit is the moon by arc seconds, okay? So what you do is you do it by months, right? Now it's moving a little more quickly. You can see I'm no longer a Taurus rising, I'm now a Gemini rising. So my progress chart ruler would be Mercury. And I got a lot of powerful stuff in Virgo. So approximately right around um, pandemic, schmandemic time, my moon moved into Libra. And it became a time for me uh, learning about justice, human autonomy, truth, uh, you know, and that lasted until approximately, let's see, the, the, the schmandemic ended right around here. And then this is when I began seriously studying Ophiuchus. This is when my moon moved into Scorpio, Scorpio Schmucus. <laughs> this is the, the area of the sky where Scorpio and Ophiuchus are, and they're not next to each other. They're on top of each other. So Scorpio is down here and Ophiuchus is up here. So I read these energies together. Um, so uh, April of last year of 2022 is when I began that deep transformational journey of learning. Uh, and it was very powerful. And if you were to read my house, you know, clockwise, it's the eighth house as well. So I'll have a lecture on that too. <clears throat> All right. So conjunct my Neptune, beginning a deep spiritual journey, uh, moving on to my North node, which in my natal chart is in the galactic center, uh, right on the cusp of Ophiuchus and Sagittarius. And now here we are getting into this year. And holy schmoles, my uh, progress moon is pretty darn close to um, my progress north node and my natal north node. And all of that's in the galactic center. 
in my in my natal chart, it's in my seventh house. So it's about, you know, projecting the savior onto someone else. And my journey has been being the savior for myself. And now my moon's in my sixth house. Okay. So I go from here. I'll I'll read the descriptions to you. This stuff is incredible. So we're going to go from fifth house to sixth house <clears throat> here uh, shortly. And I'm going to read to you what that is going to feel like for me. You know, I don't really, I don't really know about doing all this, but I just feel like the only way to give you a good example with uh, progressions is to share my stuff. All right, we're almost there. <clears throat> Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Fifth house to sixth house. So the fifth house goes like this. Personal creativity usually occurs when one has gained the security of a hearth and home. The progression of the moon <clears throat> through the fifth house is the period where you are able to express these personal creative skills, either through a craft or on a biological level by producing children. That ship sailed a while ago, guys. Expression is the emphasis and flavor of this house placement, and you will use any available transit to push your energy out into a visible form. This is also the house of lovers and recreation, so there can be new relationships formed, new activities or hobbies taken up. Indeed, through my fifth house, I was making all my organite, creating all of my meditations, trying to, you know, figure, going by a guided way, but where is this taking me? And now I'm in the sixth house and this is purpose. So once you've creatively flourished and or become a parent in the fifth house, you now feel the hard work and daily grind of health or routine. The entry of the moon into this house signifies work and effort are required, either in coping with children when they are toddlers or in polishing the craft. This is the house of perfection, requiring a body of work to be built through steady effort. If you're a creative person, having had your first flush of success, you now work to perfect the creation through routine and hard effort. With the progressed moon in this house, you're dealing with issues of duty, service, and follow through. <laughs> so that's so cool, right? Because yeah, I'm I'm in this mode. I feel like I'm creating something here with this channel that's growing. I'm creating. A, uh, a community of people that are into this same astrology <clears throat> that are very spiritual, that are very heart centered. And um, this is just beautiful energy. So, you know, where is the energy of Ophiuchus? That's the question I want to know because she's got Scorpio in here. She's got Libra in here. I understand all that. But now I'm in the depths of the galactic center. Now I'm at the dark road of Shobalba. So what does that mean for me? What is an Ophiuchus progressed moon? And I think that's what you guys came here for. So let me just give it to you. So I'm going to read this to you. This, this came to me. I channeled this. This is how I am feeling in this space right now. And after transiting Scorpio, leaning deep into the intensity of change, the storm is over. There's a moment of simplistic peace, bliss, and healing. The serpents are tamed and they bend to your will. You notice the divine light in all beings, recognizing that they are a part of you. This is where you will level up. As the moon passes through the galactic center and eventually into Sagittarius, your soul can commune with the divine. This is changing timelines, jumping realities, and knowing the true power you've always had. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm at. That is my um, progressed moon astrology. I'm I'm feeling a little bit emotional about it because it's like when I look at it, it's like, yes, this is where I'm at. So I just want to share one more thing and then I want to show you guys some stuff, okay? So this is Sagittarius for me. This is going to happen in June of next year. And this is when Venus is going to begin a whole new Venus cycle. Okay, I'm going to read to you Moon in Sagittarius. All right, here we go. 
The shackles of intense one-to-one -one relating start to ease as you see the expansiveness of the unexplored world. You now have a burning desire to increase your worldview, to do things that have never been done before, and to go places that you've never seen before, and to think of things you've never thought before. Such desires cause you to push for greater independence. The key issue is to encounter that which is new. You no longer desire intensity as it reduces your ability to have an overview. Guys, next year is when I'm going to Egypt. I'm going to go there and I'm going to do a really nice tour with somebody that's been there a bunch of times. And it's going to be a spiritual trip. And I'm going to really try to embody some of these archetypes uh, from the knowledge of Egyptian history. So I'm super excited. Uh, this, this energy is literally... Um, deeply personal, but also deeply accurate. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you about this? Yeah, let me um, let me just show you a couple of things. So obviously, you got a sneak peek of this course that's coming. Level one is like the first hundred slides. <laughs> level two is the second hundred slides, and then level three is the progressions and transits and the predictive astrology. So. This all is probably going to launch in about two weeks. And so I wanted to give you guys a taste of how I'll be teaching you. If you want to get a little taste of astronomy and astrology, I do have this course. This was essentially me doing my 13 gates journey and making sure that I truly understood everything I could about these archetypes. And I want to help you guys do this too. So I include a little bit of star energy in here. I show you where to find the constellations, how to be a stargazer and an astrologer, to bring these two sacred sciences into one in your heart and in your mind. So this is a wonderful course. Click on that button there and roll today. I'm going to put it in the links below. I'm also going to give you a link to one of, to this package. You can break it up and do all these different things, or you can just get this uh, recorded reading or, or the whole thing for a lower price. This recorded reading is going really, really well. People that are getting this are blown away. Um, I am adding progress moon energy in there for you as well. So this is like another little extra treat you guys get with it. Click right here to order that. Okay. So that link will be below. And then <laughs> I feel like such a nerd, but I wanted to do this. I am starting a Facebook group. I'm not officially launching it, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek. Me, myself, and I are the only members right now. If you can find it, I'm going to give you a gold star and an A for the day, and I might even give you a free course. But um, so this is my new uh, Facebook group. Like I said, this is a, a soft launch, so um, I will be pushing this a little bit more later. Um, it's the Fellowship of 13 Sign Astrology. This is where I want to spread the knowledge that I'm learning I want you to teach me what you know, and also where how you can work with me um, as an astrologer or as a coach. Okay, so guys, that was I not? Okay, there we go. We're gonna stop share. All right, so that was it. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel. You're gonna want to get the information that's coming. Also check out my uh, Venus through the eclipses video. This is a timeline jump, you guys. There's timeline jumps everywhere right now. We are at the um, end of a big wave of energy after the first of the month in October. We're going to be, but then there's another big one coming and we're going to be able to see it during the eclipse. So we have a little bit of a timeline jump, a little fork in the road that we can check out and um, take care of. So do check out that video and I'll leave that link below. Thank you so much. Namaste, guys.